From early on, Christians reported Marian visions and special revelations. But with all of these developments in the late Middle Ages, these now began to increase and become more elaborate. St. Bridget of Sweden claimed that Mary herself confirmed the doctrine of the Immaculate Conception in a private apparition to her. Images of Mary were thought to have wondrous powers, and in the 14th century, the Holy House of Loreto was believed to have been transported through the air from Nazareth. It became one of the most popular places of pilgrimage. The Divine Comedy of Dante Alighieri sums up the Mariology of the Middle Ages by depicting her as having influence throughout the entire universe. Earth, purgatory, heaven, and even hell. Thus, on the eve of the Reformation, the central and unique role of Christ in our redemption had become obscured. All of the great reformers were brought up as Catholics and therefore shared some measure of contemporary Catholic spirituality, especially Martin Luther, who pointed to Mary as an example of faith and of the goodness of God. As we pointed out, Martin Luther, Jean Calvin, and Ulrich Zwingli all accepted the perpetual virginity of Mary. All called Mary blessed among all women and agreed that it was fitting for Christians to honor her and venerate her. You heard that, right? All the reformers. Martin Luther taught, after the Reformation had begun, that Mary was without sin believed in her assumption, and continued in his Marian devotions until the day he died. Of Mary, Martin Luther says, she is full of grace, proclaimed to be entirely without sin. God's grace fills her with the action of God in her. Moreover, God guarded everything good and makes her devoid of all evil. God is with her, meaning, that all she did or left undone is divine and protected her from all that might be hurtful to her. Luther's own works, he, he wrote that. Did you all know that about Martin Luther? Do you find that fascinating? But according to Martin Luther, we should ask neither Mary nor any of the saints for anything. Why? Because everything comes from the hand of God alone. Allein Werksamkeit. Everything comes from God's work. Not from the saints. According to Luther. The other reformers, John Calvin and Ulrich Zwingli in particular, retained even less of contemporary Catholic spirituality, but they too attested to the purity of Mary especially Zwingli. They did object to describing Mary with terms which apply only to God, for example, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. The Protestants did, at first, retain some of the Marian feasts, but in due course these disappeared from the calendars. There were reformations within the Reformation. Defense of Marian devotion and of her important role in our redemption was mounted by the Council of Trent and the Counter-Reformation theologians. Peter Canisius, Francisco de Suarez, and Robert Bellarmine, called Hammer of the Heretics. Catholic apologists and church leaders during this time encouraged veneration of Mary and the saints, along with emphasis on the papacy and the Blessed Sacrament. Much of our Catholic devotional practice at this time evolved during that time. It's therefore reactionary to Protestant understandings. 
So try to get this. From the Reformation and the Council of Trent, right? All the way to 1959, 1960, 62. Okay? Catholic devotion, Catholic spirituality has been greatly shaped as a counter-reformation. You follow? Polemically reactionary to what the reformers and their descendants stressed. I want you to see this. If the Protestants emphasized Bible, private reading of the Bible, right, or reading of the Bible, Catholics emphasize focus on meditations of the life of Christ and the role of the priesthood. You understand what I'm trying to say? In other words, Catholic theology and spirituality has been for several hundred years reactionary to the Protestant Reformation. Obviously, Protestantism is reactionary to what? Catholic. Catholic. And on it goes. Up until the 1960s, when a little thing happened that most Catholics are completely oblivious to. Canisius, for example, composed a major treatise on Mary. De Maria Virginae Incomparabili, the incomparable Virgin Mary, which ran for four editions in eight years. In 1563, the first sodality of Our Lady was established, and by 1576, this new lay movement had over 30,000 members. Marian devotion, during this time, was considered a badge or a mark of Catholic identity. In 1573, Pope Pius VI instituted the Feast of the Holy Rosary. What month does that take place in? Marian spirituality took another turn with the appearance of the French school. Cardinal Pierre de Berul, Jean-Jacques Allier, Jean Eudes, and Louis Gringion de Montfort, or Louis de Montfort, right? We all know him, right? St. Louis de Montfort had the most enduring influence of these four men, having initiated the so-called true devotion to the Blessed Virgin, requiring absolute surrender to Mary, as mystics in the church before him absolutely surrendered themselves to Christ. This, he argued, was the only effective way to Christ. For, should we present ourselves directly to Christ, he would see our self-love. But to present ourselves through Mary is to get by his weak side. Hmm. 